26 Second Avenue. Very few New Yorkers know the historical significance of this humble storefront. See the sign behind me? It says Matchless Gifts. It was the name of a curio shop that was here in the mid-60s, a name that turned out to be quite prophetic indeed. It's here where an ancient Eastern spiritual tradition took root and expanded throughout the world. This is where it all began, the very first Hare Krishna temple in the West. Take a look around. You can see how small it is. The Swami would come and sit on this end and lecture on the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Although the Hindu Vaishnava tradition, also known as Krishna consciousness, goes back thousands of years and still has millions of followers in India, it was a very new thing in the West. So Bhaktivedanta Swami decided to incorporate his fledgling movement. And that happened in July, 1966. He founded the movement as ISKCON, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. When Srila Prabhupada came to this country, uh, he did something that uh, was quite uh, daring in the sense that his goal was to transplant a very well-established and very authentic and old tradition from India to uh, the United States, to New York City, to the 60s counterculture. I mean, if you look at it comparatively, there couldn't be two more different cultures than these two. Within 12 short years after he left India, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada traveled across the globe 14 times, initiated thousands of disciples, established over 100 centers, several farm communities, as well as various charity and educational organizations. But what happened to his legacy after he passed in 1977? Where does his organization stand now, five decades after he established it? It was underneath this tree on October 9, 1966, that A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada held the first recorded outdoor chanting session of the Hare Krishna mantra outside of the Indian subcontinent. Chanting the Hare Krishna mantra is one of the most important activities for Krishna devotees. got lots of singers here, lots of musicians, uh, and lots of dynamic people who want to share their joy and their happiness and the, the purity of uh, Harinam, of, of Krishna's names. And so there are quite a few different initiatives going on. The Harinam itself goes out every day, and that um, goes, it's generally two to three hours. People from so many countries come here so you can sing to all over the world when you come here on Harinam. This kirtan London, sometimes they hold six to eight hour kirtans where they invite the general public, anyone who wants to come. I always come to kirtan to go deep inside. I cried even more than usual. <laughs> connects me with uh, happiness. There's been kind of a, a surge over the last 15 years where we've seen more and more the, the youth of the Hare Krishna movement are just set alight by their desire to specifically do kirtan. After years of planting seeds in the West, Prabhupada returned to India and with the help of his American and Indian disciples, started building beautiful temples in the major cities and holy places there. One of his main projects was to build a spiritual city in Mayapur on the banks of the river Ganges.
Travel Pad was planning a project that was far bigger than ever had been attempted by anyone else. A temple like this has never been built for hundreds of years. We want to make this like a gem. This temple, the Temple of Vedic Planetarium, can unite the whole world and establish the peace and prosperity all over the world. Amayapur is the home for all devotees. I was born and brought up in England. I was born in Cape Town, South Africa. I was born in Detroit, Michigan, in America. I'm from Brazil. I was born in Bengal. My wife, Maya Pureshwari, is from Ukraine. I originally come from China. We actually had a, a visitor here once from the UN, and he said, wow, this really is the United Nations here. <laughs> It's amazing how people can understand each other, although they're so different. We have a oneness on the spiritual platform, and at the same time we recognize the differences, there's variety as well. Mayapur is just a happy place. Back in the early days, most of the devotees lived and served inside the temple itself. Nowadays, most devotees have families and have regular jobs. Lawyers, doctors, bus drivers, even actors like me. Today is the Ratha Yatra festival in New York City. Although Prabhupada started his mission here in New York, his teachings have reached almost everywhere in the world now and have been making the kind of impact that, for some places, was unimaginable 50 years ago. I в нефтяной компании полдня, в остальное время фотография моей профессии. There is no material reasons why this movement grew so much. Definitely, grace of Shila Prabhupada and his way of presentation, because so far we distributed millions of his books, probably around 20 million of Prabhupada's books, and people just by reading his books become devotees, become convinced. His presentation is absolutely unique. I was interested in the literature and I stayed in the movement because there was music. There was something I could connect to and I could immediately find my role, my place in the community. Behind me are a row of colorful tents. Inside of each of them is a different aspect of the central components of the culture of Krishna consciousness. Directly behind me is a booth called Books on Yoga and Meditation. They give the basis of our philosophy. Basically, that we're not this body, we're eternal spiritual souls. A BBT ela foi criada por Prabhupada há mais de 50 anos com o intuito de ter documentado né, o seu conhecimento para poder levar para todas as pessoas né, aquilo que ele acreditava. Minha maior alegria na vida é esse serviço de tradução, porque eu sei que eu não estou beneficiando só a mim, mas eu beneficio as pessoas que têm acesso a esse livro. E a tradução também tem uma vantagem, algumas vezes eu gosto de escrever também, mas na escrita talvez apareçam as minhas imperfeições, as minhas debilidades. Mas quando eu traduzo o livro de uma pessoa completamente qualificada, como os Goswamis ou Prabhupada, eu tenho certeza de que eu estou sendo um instrumento de uma mensagem perfeita. Então, me inspirou muito né, fazer distribuir livros, porque foi também através dos livros que eu pude mudar de vida, né? mudar meu nível de consciência, né? que mudou completamente a minha vida. Então eu, eu gostaria, eu gosto né, da ideia de oportunizar isso para outras pessoas, dar isso para outras pessoas, né? algo que foi maravilhoso na minha vida, que outras pessoas tenham oportunidade.
A partir de 2009, em 2009 nós conseguimos distribuir 135 mil livros e desde então a nossa média anual é de 350 mil livros. É, a minha maior felicidade na vida é quando eu vejo que para o Upada ele é reconhecido pelo serviço que ele fez e que faz para a humanidade. Vegetarianism is one of the most important aspects of a Krishna conscious lifestyle. Devotees try to cause the least amount of suffering possible to other living beings. This is called ahimsa in Sanskrit. It's the principle of non-violence. Prabhupada and his followers have contributed tremendously to the fact that vegetarianism is much more popular now and has even become somewhat mainstream. Not that long ago, uh, it was kind of unheard of to have a vegetarian restaurant. And I would dare say that Hare Krishna are probably the first people in Australia to do one. There were teary moments and, you know, a lot of blood, sweat and tears. And, but, you know, I think for, if you want to establish something great, there's, you have to go through those kind of crazy processes. And, and now it's a, it's a massive, you know, massive sort of lifestyle choice. If you say clean eating, vegan, all that sort of, sort of stuff, now it's embraced. And I think we did the, the, a lot of the groundwork for that. It's kind of an exciting new world of, of vegetarian prashadam distribution. I always eat at Govinda's. Just a natural routine. <laughs> the best recipe for people to be happy, I think that developing an attitude of service towards other people. The reason we do what we do and we push every day is the reciprocation we get from the people we're doing it for. And every day they're coming in, we have people coming in multiple times a day even, and just showering with us appreciation and affection and love. I think the Hare Krishnas, are, that I know them anyway, are really integral to the community at James Street. I think they provide a really beautiful service um, and they make incredible food. <laughs> Giving out prashadam, or sanctified vegetarian food, is a symbol of love and care, and is an integral part of the ancient spiritual Indian culture. When Prabhupada first started attracting followers, he personally cooked for them and personally fed them. Later on, he asked his disciples to make sure that no one ever went hungry within a 10-mile radius of any ISKCON center. Iskon Food for Life is the world's largest free food vegetarian program which serves out holistic meals to people all around the world at its different centers. The Food for Life initiative in Iskon Mumbai started in 1980s and is still going very strong where a holistic meal is served to people every day morning and evening. So we started this project in the year 2004. It was a very humble beginning. On the first day we went to one school which had only 900 students. 11 years down the road. We have set up 20 kitchens in different parts of the country. We have a presence in 8 states. And we are feeding 1.2 million kids every day. Although he started his mission in a big metropolis, Swami Prabhupada inspired his followers to establish farm communities, leading a lifestyle of simple living and high thinking. He taught them to respect nature and how to be self-sufficient, living off what the land and the cows provide. Samukra. A környezetvédelem az nem csak egy jelmondat, amit kiteszünk valahova az ajtó fölé és arról, és azt meditálunk nap, mint nap, hanem 
ami gyakorlatban az életmódunk a legfőbb környezetvédelmi programunk. A közösségünkben 130-an élnek, és a, ehhez szükséges zöldséget, gyümölcsöt, gabonát, tejet, tejtermékét meg tudjuk termelni. Gabonából több mint tízszeres túltermelésünk van. At the moment we have around 50 cows and oxen. We have our own water system. So Krishnaval is completely off the grid. No gas, no water, no electricity is coming in. Krishnavalli has a really great reputation of being the largest sustainable eco-village in Europe. Well, the stage program is winding down. The younger generation is really stepping up, taking on more leadership roles within the society and the organization of running festivals like this one. I've always felt that my mission is to be of use. I have a teaching degree, so my primary job is teaching. What we really look at is a holistic approach to education. They teach science, they teach mathematics, they teach reading, they teach how to write, they teach how to read and comprehension, and lots of other stuff, including about Krishna. And so that's why I really like the school. Everything that we do, it's, it's age appropriate and um, it's done with the eye of, of just creating the, these positive spiritual experiences that they can look back on and want to continue or relive in some way. I want to be an ecologist and save Krishna's trees. I think ISKCON's contribution to the world around us uh, has to do with the fact that it provides an authentic spiritual perspective on many of the issues that face us in the world today. We live in a world that is technologically very advanced, that is scientifically very accomplished, and yet a world where people are seeking community, they're seeking heart, they're seeking relationships with other human beings, and are seeking meaning and purpose in their lives. And what ISKCON does, I think, is provide the opportunity, provide a pathway to finding that meaning and living it in a day-to-day -day way that is at the same time connected to our world around us and yet gives meaning and hope for something much greater uh, than we human beings can imagine ourselves.